Hello and welcome. Today we're going to be looking at bulk installing fonts. Uh, and we're basically going to write a script that will download from this website, 1001freefonts.com. Download a bunch of them, unzip them, and install them to your system. All in one script. I'm going to go over the basic. We're going to start writing like a one-liner, but then I'll show you a script that I've written and go through it in detail so that uh, you can get it. And also the script will be available, hopefully if I remember, in the links in the description of this video. If not, uh, you can always go to my website, type on scripts, uh, click on scripts, uh, notes, uh, and then search through there for free fonts and you should be able to find the script. If for some reason I forget to put it in the uh, description of this video. But let's go ahead and have a look at this. So. Let's quickly review. If we were to download this, I could unzip it. So uh, if I hover over this, I can say right click, I can say copy link address, I can say wget, paste in that, and then I can say unzip that zip file. And you can see we have a TTF file, and I should be able to say copy that file to my home directory dot local share fonts and then I should be able to type in cf-cache-f-v and that font will now be, it's updating, it's looking through all the fonts on my system and that font will be now added. Great, let's do that in bulk. So first thing we need to do, as you can see there's multiple pages here and we're gonna very basically look through this and I'm just gonna say go through the first 100 pages which is probably more than 100 pages. We can write the script a little more in depth to actually look at what the next page is. I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna start off, I'm gonna copy this URL and as you can see we're on page two here. And of course if I was to say wget, I can put in that URL and if I sell, tell it dash o dash, it's just gonna output the HTML to this page, to the screen here. Let's go ahead, we can make this full screen so we can see things a little bit better. I have the font kind of large so you guys can read a little bit better, which makes things fall into multiple lines. Uh, but uh, we know that we're looking for the download. So actually, let's go back to this real quick. We can look through the HTML, but real quick, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit either F12 in Chrome or Control-Shift-I. Uh, and I'm going to click this little button and click on this element right here. And we can see that uh, you know it says Downloads in capital letters, which we kind of knew from that button. I think we're looking for something unique about these lines. Uh, and we can search for zip, but there's other things that say zip, but I think that using downloads would be a good way to go. So let's go back here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, now I'm gonna pipe the output of that command to grep, and I'm gonna say, look for the word download capitalized. And now I get a line of the downloads, uh, lines that have the word download capitalized. And as you can see, we can see the href, uh, so the, the the link to the zip file. Uh, since it's starting with forward slash, it's meaning it's gonna start with the, that domain. So what I could do, uh, if I go back to here, uh, if I was to go here, I can say that. So now we know that's the link, but it starts off with HTTPS www.1001freefonts.com, that link, and now I click that and it's now downloaded that file. So now we can put that into a loop. So all we have to do is cut, but you also notice that each one shows up more than once. So let's go ahead, go back to our thing here, our first little line. I'm also gonna say dash Q for quiet, uh, but we're gonna say download and output the HTML, grab all the lines that say download. Then I'm gonna say cut dash D backslash uh, single quote, also known as a apostrophe and oh, field two, so dash F2. And now we have a list, but again, we have two of each. So I can say sort uh, dash U, which will sort them and unique them. So now we have this and we have, by default, uh, the website outputs 10 per page. So there you go. Those are the first 10 from the first page, actually second page, because we're on page number two. Um, what we want to do next is pipe that into, well, there's different ways we can do this. And you know what, uh, in my final script, I actually put this through a while loop, but we should be able to use set, and that might be a little bit better. Um, let me give that a try. Uh, now, there's different things you can do here. We're gonna be working with a forward slash, but instead, by default, most people use forward slash as their delimiter. So if I wanted to do, replace uh, the forward slash D, I would have to do um, backslash forward slash D, 
and then I would have to put in forward slash, I would have to do a whole bunch of backslashes, but you can really use any character you want as a delimiter. So I can use the pipe symbol here, and that's going to be a little easier, that way I don't have to backslash stuff out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, take this, the forward slash d forward slash, and I'm going to replace it with this d forward slash. If I get the, if I did that, yep. So that's actually a better option. Like I said, in my final script, I was using a while loop. I could replace that with this now, and it would actually save some processing power. Um, but there we have the full URL to each one of those. Now we can pipe that into a while loop. We can put it in a while loop, or you can actually also dump it into a file, and then later on wget can um, download things from a file list. But we're not going to do that. So now I'm going to pipe that into while. And I'm going to say, uh, we'll call it while read, I'll say z for zip file, do wget dollar sign z, done. And what that would do would loop through each one, download it. But let's say you stop your script and then start it up again. Uh, you want it to... Uh, also, I think when you get to the first one on each page, it's the same as the last one from the previous page. We're going to do dash C, which means if it's already been downloaded, it's going to skip it. If it's partially downloaded, continue where you left off. So now, I should be able to run that, and it's going to start downloading each one from that page. Now, if I control C to kill that, and I start it again, you'll notice the first few, it said, files already downloaded, nothing to do, and it just skipped over them. Uh, so there you go, we're downloading that. So we just downloaded the first 10 from the second page. What we can do now, and again, I'm doing this all as a one-liner. I'm going to go into a script here in a moment uh, that's a little bit cleaner. Uh, but what we can do is we can say for i in, and there's different ways you can do this. You can use brace expansions. I'm just going to do back ticks uh, and pipe it into while, and I'm going to say or sorry, not while, we're doing a for loop, do, and I'm going to use sequence, so S-E-Q, and again, these are back ticks, which are next to the one on a standard QWERTY keyboard, uh, it's not a single quote, but I'll just say 1 through 100, which will download the first 100 pages, so for that, do this, and we're going to replace this too with dollar sign I, and we're going to add a, another done, and now that we do this, it's going to... Ooh, I did something wrong. Oh, I did a pipe, and this should be semicolon. There we go. So now it's actually starting at page 1. It's going to go through the 10 on page 1. Then when it gets to page 2, it will skip over the first two. It will say that they're already downloaded because we're doing the continue. But we're good. It's downloading all the zip files for the first 100 pages, which would be a 1,000 fonts, right? Because there's 10 on each page. Well, really... You're probably going to get nine on most pages because, like I said, I'm pretty sure this website, the first one on each page is the same as the last one on the previous page. Pretty sure. And we're going to get about a thousand fonts going through the first hundred pages. There's more than a hundred pages on this website, so you can actually probably up that to 200. I don't know how many pages there are. We could set our script to look at whatever the next page is. But as you can see, I can control C to kill this. You can see there's a bunch of zip files here. Um, and then we can loop through, unzip them, copy them to our our fonts folder and then update our system. So let's have a look at the script that I wrote, which kind of puts all this, again, this is a one-liner, which is great, but kind of hard to read. Uh, if I go to my temp folder, I actually created a folder here, and I'm going to say vim get fonts. Uh, we'll go to the top. So we've got our shebang line at the top, my little GPL notification there with the copyright information for my script. Here we're saying a variable for our domain set the number of pages, so you can set this to whatever you want. You can say 100, 200, whatever you want. Then we're doing our for loop like we just did. We're going to use uh, SEQ from 1 to the number of pages that you set there. We're doing a loop here, again, just as we did in our one-liner, looping through all this. This is basically our, our one-liner, except for I did a while loop here where um, uh, domain I use, I use said in there somewhere, I can't remember where, uh, but this works. Uh, check out, uh, again, I'll have a link in the description of this video. Once it downloads them all, once it finishes that, then it's going to unzip all the zip files. So that's just looping through each one and unzipping it, because unzip, by default, you can't just put 
an asterisk in there, so you use a while loop. There might be a way to do it, but we're just going to use a for loop. And then uh, we get here where we move it, so it's going to use uh, mkdir to make a directory. Dash p means if to if fonts doesn't exist, create it. If local share doesn't create, create it. So it creates any parent directory. So if I just said create this directory and dot local or dot local share doesn't exist, it would fail. But dash p says create all these directories all the way down to that, which these first two should exist already because there's other things in those folders for your system. Once that's created, it's now going to look for in the directory you're in all TTF files and OTF. It's going to search subdirectories. You can't just do, do copy those because a lot of those zip files have subfolders where the fonts are. So it's going to look for these two uh, main formats, file types of fonts. It's going to loop through them and it's going to move them to that directory up here. Really, I kind of put this in a variable because this is moving it to, for the local user, as we talked about in the previous video, there's a different folder under USR local share fonts, I think. Uh, or it might just be USR shared fonts. Check out the previous video for that, um, for a system-wide font install. But for the local user, this is what works. And then after they're all unzipped, you're going to then run this command to have your system update and look for new fonts. But that's it. Uh, we got, you know, about 25, 30 lines of code to pull down thousands of fonts from that website and install them. And uh, again, uh, Linux, most distributions come with a number of fonts. There's a lot in the repositories, but a lot of those are very basic fonts, which is fine if you're doing office stuff. But if you want to do stuff more creative, um, you're going to want fancier fonts, I guess you could say. And um, this 1001 fonts is awesome that you can quickly, again, you can type in something here to see. So if I want to do films by Chris and see what that looks like, I can say update. And there you can see what your words look like in those fonts, which is pretty cool. Like a little film strip almost for films by Chris. Anyway, uh, but again, we're bulk downloading it, which means you're not looking at the licenses while you do that. Um, the zip files do usually contain the licenses, but if you're writing a script like this, you're not using it. Pretty much every font on this website is free for personal use, but some are, a lot are only for personal use. So if you're going to use this for commercial use, be sure to check out the license so you don't get in trouble. Um, so yeah, check that out. If you're gonna be doing anything beyond just personal use, non-commercial use, uh, you're good. There are a lot that are, and I, you're probably at the top of the page. I bet they have, because they have, again, categories up here. Uh, top fonts, rare fonts. You would think there would be a way, there might be a way on the page somewhere to search for ones with particular licenses. Um, of course, again, I don't know if this violates um, their terms and agreements by bulk downloading all these. Uh, it might, probably does. They also offer up the 10,000 10, fonts uh, with commercial use for about 20 bucks. I've never done that. Uh, lots of times I just come here and search, but sometimes it's pain the butt to go and search for something and when you can just look through the list in your program. Now remember, if you already have a program open, GIMP or your office application where you're typing stuff and you want to use a font that you just installed, after running this, you have to close that program and reopen it in most cases for it to update its font list. Um, also keep in mind, I don't know if it would make a difference. If you installed like 10,000 or 20,000 fonts, is that going to affect how that program runs when you're searching through the fonts. You know, when you have some, a writer open and you click on this to search the fonts, uh, is it going to affect how quickly you can scroll through the fonts? I don't know, I have a lot installed right now and um, it doesn't really affect it. Uh, and luckily in in uh, Libre Writer here, it's uh, easy to search if you know the name of your font. Uh, so like, yeah. If you know the name of it, let's click on this and just start typing. Do I have any comic or coming soon command? So if you know the name of your font, uh, some programs make it real easy to search through. If you don't know the font or if they don't let you search it, sometimes it's a little difficult uh, if you're trying to scroll and you have a lot of fonts. So you may want to, I don't know, all depends on what you want to do. Now I'm just blabbering. Thank you for watching. Uh, again, this script is up on uh, Pastebin. 
uh, if you go to pacepin.com forward slash, this is the URL here. I'll try to put this in the link in the description of this video. Uh, if I forget, that's it right there. Or you can always go to filmsbychris.com. If you click on software, I think I said scripts the other day in the last video, uh, software notes will bring you to a page that I have that searches through all my pastebin scripts. Again, when I wrote this, I didn't write it the best, but if you type in fonts, um, it, it should show up. I just wrote this script and it, updated to pastebin. This list, this little search thing, updates once a day, like at like two in the morning. So when you type that, uh, you'll probably see this 2018 setup, uh, and then you'll see my, you'll see this uh, there, this script, blah, blah, blah. 2018 setup is just, um, a list of applications uh, and setups for when I set up a new system. Uh, it's things I install and there are some font programs I install there. Anyway, if you want to see some of my, after installing a very minimal system, some of the things I do, this is the stuff I do, stuff I install and commands I run to configure my system. That's it. Thank you for watching. Uh, please visit, again, filmsbychris.com. That's Chris with a K. There you can search through my videos. You can also go to the support section and support me either uh, with PayPal or Patreon. And remember, Patreon supporters get uh, early access and downloadable videos. I do thank you for watching. And as always, I hope that you have a great day.